Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Jason Butler, Harner, David Sullivan, and Virginia Cole about The Big Ben, which is premiering at the Austin Film Festival. Thank you all for your time. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. It's exciting festival season. I mean, Jason, I mean, it's 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 such an amazing pre- prestige film festival. How does it feel for the Big Ben to be premiering at the Austin Film Festival? I'm just so excited that it's getting a premiere and it's getting a premiere in Texas. And especially as one, like a festival like this, which is so grassroots and beloved with the history. So I'm excited for the film. I'm excited for the Texas nature of it to be there. Absolutely. We obviously don't want to go into spoilers or anything, Virginia, but what can you tell us about this film um, from kind of a perspective of what we could expect story, story-wise? Um, it's in the most epic landscape you could ever imagine. It looks beautiful. It's um, both a <clears throat> quiet family drama and it's also a suspenseful, surrealist, magical uh, world that, yeah. that it happens in. It's, it's weird and touching and quiet and authentic and totally bizarre. Absolutely. It's, it's, it, that's really interesting you say that. And David, I want you kind of to add to that. When I saw, like, when, when I was researching the film and, and got to look around the film and everything, it, there is a lot of, there's a lot happening genre-wise. There's a lot of genre bending. It's a lot happening. Did you notice that when you're reading the script that you were making a genre bending movie? No, no. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of a dum-dum. Uh, <laughs> uh, Virginia and Jason probably saw it all, but I, I just read it and I was like, oh, this is a really, really cool script about this group of friends who get to spend time in a beautiful, majestic part of Texas that I've never been to. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if, if we're able to make, if we're all able to cram this into our schedules and make this thing work, like we have something pretty special here. Absolutely. Jason, what was it like playing this character specifically in this film that has kind of a lot going on like we just talked about? Well, it was great. I mean, the thing that I loved about the script was that you just have, and, and just a reminder, we shot the film before the pandemic. Yeah. So, um, and Brett's aesthetic as a writer and as a director is leaning towards like families, human, humanity, the nature of living. And now post pandemic, I feel like we're all really thinking about that in a different way, which makes it a pretty great time for this movie to come out, I think. Yeah. And so I just love that Corey is his name, that Corey, that he, it's his family. He loves his wife. He loves his kids. They have something that they're trying to navigate and uh, privately. And um, it leads to some dark places, but it's more just families trying to survive in a difficult time. So I just really appreciated the nuances of that and getting to lean into that. And I'm glad you said that it is, it is like a, a genre bending film you know i think if if you get to talk to brett things that he loves qualities of movies that he loves that have a different pace a slower pace that have a slightly uh a small uh a kind of a supernatural or a surrealistic streak that comes in and when you go to a place like the big bend where the nature is so beautiful and there are energy lines there and history there as well that things can open up that allow for some of those things well it's funny you mentioned that about genre vending i feel like because you know, I, all three of you have been on some amazing projects that I feel do this, where I'm a big fan of like the horror genre, the thriller genre. Um, you know, Big Little Lies, The Wilds, Ozark are by no means like, they're not horror, like like t- like TV shows. They're, they Some of them could be considered thrillers more than others, but they all have those kind of moments, Virginia, where you could, you feel kind of uncomfortable at times. They all do that. They all, they, they, they push the envelope a little bit. Do you, do you agree with that a bit? That a lot of films are bending, a lot of films and TV are bending genres, Virginia, but there is a little bit of this because horror and thriller, I think is really big. There's a little bit of this kind of push of like dark components to stories a little bit. Do you notice that Virginia? Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I think yeah. you hit the nail on the head, my friend. <laughs> David, do you agree with me on that one too? You're, David, well, you're yeah. just looking at me. You're like, that is a good, like, I can see you're like, that is a good point. I see that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think if you're able to tell a story and it grabs the audience, um, then, then I think job well done. Mm-hmm. And I, I, 
you know, it's we we're kind of in a dark place right now yeah. uh, as a as a society. I mean, not to not to go too much into that, but like there's not much out there that we can really be thrilled about except for movies. So I, I feel like we're in a very being actors, uh, we're in a very fortunate position that we get the opportunity to tell these stories. And, and I don't think it's any coincidence that a lot of the stuff that you've seen lately kind of leans a little darker. Yeah, no, absolutely. Question for all three of you. We'll do a roundtable thing right now. I just am curious. We'll start with Jason. Um, there's a lot to love about storytelling these days. There's so many amazing things. I personally think there's three specific components why storytelling is so amazing and powerful. Virginia, you kind of said it. The location of this film, it's amazing. It looks amazing. I feel like, you know, the cinematography component, how things are looking these days is incredible. Then there's obviously the quality of the actual stories and the writing. But then I also think that there's the global action access Jason that blows my mind that people have access to so much content all over the place so there's kind of what it looks like the quality of the storytelling and the access is there one of the three that kind of stands out to you or is it all of them a little bit that work together that make this an amazing time for storytelling Jason you know I think I think that's a really positive way to look at it I think there's a <laughs> lot of content and a lot of fodder out there and a lot of things trying to get our attention so and there's a lot of people in the effort to make something that are replicating other forms that have done well, especially commercially. That's not what this film is. This film is a true to Brett Wagner's vision and his aesthetic. And if you see his first film, especially Chiefs or something like that, you get an idea of what he appreciates about life. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I, I mean, I hear you. I definitely think it's, I definitely think it's, you have to begin with what's on the page, what yep. the story is. And then you definitely, I, of course, in my tunnel vision, think you have to have really good actors, yep. which we are really fortunate. We have game actors here who are very good, but also Stacked game. Cast. You all do go, such a good job, seriously. Yeah, who are willing to go to Terlingua, Texas, five hours from the closest airport in 120 degree heat and a dollar fifty and a piece of bread, <laughs> maybe, and scorpions <laughs> and rattlesnakes and children, which is the worst or not and make a film uh, make a film so you know i think brett's idea is something that uh, like there's just families trying to go and you add this gorgeous element and these actors and what he's trying to say can happen out there like it just gets really simple at the end at the end of the day i think people are looking for authentic stories as well as new ways of telling stories i was making a joke with david earlier but we've all seen so much content now that we know tropes of storytelling as i said to dave you know when you watch a relatively known actor who has a three second cameo in the first act of law and order he probably and did it, it. yeah <laughs> so the perp. how do you surprise and i think the way brett did is he just went to something that is based on uh, he had a weekend with aaron brown onion creek productions who produced his film and they jumped off from there so i think that's what makes this uh, unique and good and surprising in how much you get to know, especially the four of us, as well as the kids and that part of the country. 100%. Curious to kind of continue the round table, Dave, the, th the things I've mentioned, and you can kind of add to what Jason says, but is there anything that stands out? Cause I, I just feel like things just look amazing these days. They're just a the look of things. It just blows my mind. Well, I, I think that was a, a, a big, and this might not be answering your question, but that was a big draw for me and in, in being a part of this film, just, understanding who was going to be shooting and how it was going to be shot and how they're going to capture this landscape. I mean, I, I, I'm from Texas. I was, I was born and raised in Texas. I'd never actually been to the part of Texas that we shot. And when I got there, I felt like I was in a completely different country. Like I, the, 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 de the mountainous desert and, and just the, 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 the grandiosity of, of what we were surrounded by and, and also like freak summer, uh, lightning and rainstorms like the the you know the landscape was a big was was a really attractive piece to it and I, I think I think the way that it was captured is is really is really gonna you know move a lot of people absolutely Virginia to kind of end this kind of roundtable question anything stand out to you in storytelling specifically um Brett Wagner is a fantastic writer <laughs> He's been, I think that's why we all originally agreed to sign on to this because we read something different and special. Um, and uh, he had the balls and the taste to uh, cast people that appreciate it and to give us a little bit of room. Yep. Um, 
and Paul Atkins. I mean, so much of the story was on the page, but also uh, one of the joys of indie filmmaking is that there is a little more freedom. I mean, it's terrifying and it's messy, but it means that we're set up for one shot at the base of the mountain, but oh my God, Paul saw that the light at the top of the hill was glorious. So he just says, run. And Jason and I literally drop everything, run up to the top of this hill and he just throws the camera on his shoulder and starts shooting. And like, look at the story that we told in that scene. It wasn't scripted, it was spontaneous, it was in the moment. And it's one of my, the moments in the movie I'm most excited about. Me too. It's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Absolutely. Do you think there's a weird thing about this term of indie film where independent, where obviously the budgets are smaller and everything, but you look at the landscape, it's the same thing also with music as well. You know, some of the big, like like some indie rock bands are some of the biggest bands on the planet playing stadiums. I find there's a weird thing with indie, with film, where even though it has a smaller budget, there's nothing small about some of these stories. Like it's huge. Do you know? Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, but I mean, I think at the end of the day, you have to give it up to a movie like The Big Ben with a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget, and that far out in Texas made that film with a whole bunch. I mean, the crew is maybe twenty, twenty-two people in mm -hmm. one hundred and twenty degree heats with little kids dropping in our arms from heat exhaustion while we're making this film. Wow. Versus an independent film which may not have a huge studio behind it, but you now have Jennifer Lawrence or you have a star of a caliber yeah. where their budget is heavier, things are gonna be a little easier, favors are gonna be easier. I'm all about those films as well and I appreciate them, but may I mean, maybe to your point, I think all of these festivals like Austin to take the time to really respect independent filmmaking where people are making things on cameras. People are like, I yes. have an idea. I don't have the agency. I don't have the whatever. And yet I'm going to do it anyway. Yep. That's where I give even more respect to them existing. And that's, that's a fair you know, point. That's you know. huge. And I defy anyone to watch this movie and guess what our budget was. I mean, Paul is a magician. He worked magic. It, it, what he was able to do with so few resources is remarkable. It's There's an intimidating thing to think about too, though, right? Where, you know, you don't need the big, big budget to fit like that. It's, it's interesting. It's a game changer in the industry too, Jason, if you think about it. I mean, the hard part is, the, listen, the hard part is with so much content, how do we, how does, how does, how do you make sure it's good? How do you and then how do we make sure that someone like you can see it? You yep. know what I mean? That's the, that's where the money really comes in and sometimes that's and then sometimes the nature of how i think people are looking for authentic things and we all love big budget mm -hmm. things i don't know what your first movie back in the movie theater was but that's been a point of you know that's the thing that a lot of my friends are saying oh what was the first movie that got you back in the movie theater i haven't gone back into the movie i haven't gone yet. back ever that's interesting but like there's some movies that I want to see on a big screen and I know I, this is not a bunch of BS. This is a movie that I would want to see on the big screen because it'll be beautiful on your computer or on your phone. But the truth is the landscape is so massive that to see it bigger and the way Paul put the camera on it and caught it, it's so... It just tells a better story on a bigger oh, screen. Oh, no, absolutely. But before we wrap up very quick, I just want to go around the table. Um, when people get a chance to see the film, I just want to... Uh, to ask you, but what are you hoping specifically to get out of it takeaway-wise, David, when they get to see the Big Bend? Um, well, I, I, I kind of what Jason was saying, I, I, I like the fact that, you know, an independent film has, has, the, uh, has outlets like, you know, Austin Film Festival and all the other festivals that are slowly starting to come back in person. Um, I just like the fact that people are going to be able to see this on the big screen. I, you know, I had, I had two other films that, that uh, kind of made the festival circuit in the last year, and it was all online. And I went to one festival in Phoenix and it was just, um, it wasn't a great film that I saw on the screen. I'm not gonna say what it was, but I, my first movie back was not a great movie, but to be in the theater <laughs> and remember the feeling of, of what movies can do, it was really, really special. So there's so much about our movie that I want people to take away. I yeah. mean, friendship, love, um, landscape, Texas, um, I mean, these are all kind of broad terms, but but I, I just just the idea that people are coming out and and I don't want to say risking anything, but coming out to the theater and seeing it, that's what really makes me happy. Virginia, takeaways quickly. Um, 
I hope that an audience leaves entertained with a little thrill, with a little sense of breathlessness. Uh, I think there's moments in this movie that are going to be make people's breath catch in their throat. And uh, also the gorgeous performances of young Delilah and Zoe Wagner um, in particular. Um, I, I think that they took eight strangers and they brought us together and I believe that we've been doing life together for years and it's so nice to see um, a connection and um, you know authentic family stories like that and Absolutely. I and people be entertained. Mm -hmm. So I think I want people to go, I want people to recognize simply and therefore complex how everyone's got a struggle mm -hmm. and you don't know what that is. So be kind. Yeah. And also you don't know how it's going to solve or resolve. And sometimes that's at the hands of humans. And sometimes that's at the hands of just something larger and energetic that you don't know what that is. There are no aliens in this movie. There are no <laughs> monsters. I don't want anyone to think like the supernatural. Oh, there. But, there might be. But there there, might be. Uh, there's an element of crazy things happen in, in, in nature and in the Big Bend, you know? Mm -hmm. Jason, David, Virginia, thank you all for so much for coming on the show to talk about the Big Bend. I really appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thank you for having us. So Austin Film Festival premiering uh, very quickly. Where could, uh, is there any like social media platforms people could follow you on keep up date with everything, Jason? I'm on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Butler Harner. Yeah. Yeah. David? Yeah. Twitter, Instagram, uh, at David Sullivan. Virginia? I'm a 90-year-old woman and I don't have social media. She's the smartest one and she has kids. <laughs> True. This has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. The Big Band will be premiering at the Austin Film Festival. Until next time, this is Jason Butler Harner, David Selvin, Virginia Cole, and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.